Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here at the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for June 24th, 2020, recorded on 1.28 p.m. Eastern Time. We're real quickly here again, our unmanned camera system project to capture all the raw fury and power of tropical cyclones as they make landfall along the coast is coming together nicely. And again, we are well underway now to our phase two testing and getting ready now to push this in an operational phase. Again, this is just something we caught the other night here, just this quick bolt of lightning that, that we were able to catch uh, with, with our GoPro camera system. Again, if you guys do want to go support what we're doing, make sure to go follow me here on Twitter, on Twitter at MicroMally1, and also go follow me here on YouTube as well. Now, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies that's updated as of yesterday, we continue to notice the very quick demise of any sort of warming out here with the ENSO state becoming more of a cool neutral towards a La Nina type environment out here. Again, there will be no such El Nino to deal with this year as we continue to cool off these areas with an additional easterly wind burst that's occurring across this region that will continue to rapidly cool these waters, causing significant upwelling and push all of that cooler waters over these areas during the next several weeks or so. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic Basin, we continue to have a more favorable Atlantic, uh, Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, the AMO pattern. We're starting to notice some cooler blobs kind of uh, appear through here. That is because of the Saharan air layer, this, this big sow outbreak caused by a very intense African easterly jet, along with uh, these really big convective, uh, these AEWs, African Easterly Waves, that would come off of Africa in the southern latitudes. Now with the intertropical, intertropical convergence zone lifting northward, that's going to cause more sat outbreaks further and further to the north. But the Atlantic Main Development Region is pretty warm above the long-term average, about a full half degree Celsius to a degree Celsius above the long-term average in spots. Very significant warming continues or is, is slowing down at least, but we still continue to have the MDR above the long-term average setting up what could be for a very busy hurricane season this year. Now, if we take a look here at the latest uprushing heat content, last updated as of this morning, again, once you start getting into these reds and white or reds and oranges and reds here, that's your higher uprushing heat content, your warmer water at depth, the more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere. And again, the thunderstorms and tropical cyclones love especially tropical cyclones, they love this deep upper ocean heat content to, uh, to feed off of. That's their fuel, basically. <clears throat> this prevents significant cooler upwelling. As, the th as, a, as a tropical system continues to churn on, for example, it would just continue to, to basically upwell warmer uh, wa the warm water. It wouldn't upwell any cooler water. So basically, our highest concentration of these values right now are basically in the Caribbean, and then even some now in the southwestern Atlantic Basin, the Gulf of Mexico, as always. The southern main development region is uh, warming up quite nicely. Uh, now you can even see some of that OHC now beginning to approach into the uh, southern Cabo Verde Islands here. So over the next while, this is going to continue to evolve and you'll start to see a bigger presence of this uh, OHC content higher and further to the north. And again, that's only going to continue to increase with time in this area. So that gives a check mark across there. Everywhere else basically is more than supportive in the thermodynamic environment environment for tropical cyclones to take advantage of. So again, there's plenty going forward that we're going to have to keep, a, a, you know, attack or, you know, kind of, you know, really keep track of over the next several weeks as we get a big convectively coupled Kelvin wave to pass from the Eastern Pacific Basin into the Atlantic Basin, the Western part of the Atlantic. And after that, you know, it's anyone's guess at that point what might actually happen. Now, once again, our roadmap here. This is our roadmap for our unmanned camera system project. We're still in phase two testing. We have not cleared phase one or phase two testing yet. However, we are getting very close to being able to clear this off of phase two testing and begin to push this into the operational phase. We'll still have some tests here and there in the operational phase uh, to incorporate newer and more uh, advanced things that are ongoing uh, with our camera system project. But for the most part, we are pushing now into our phase three and again, that will be fully operational. Our unmanned camera system projects are, are designed to run uh, with a max right now of 11 hours with a, a 
you know, expansion plans to about 24 plus hours. This will be put along the coastlines in front of tropical cyclones as they make landfall along the United States coast. Right now, this year, we're going to be testing here in Florida and maybe even perhaps teaming up with HurricaneTrack.com's Mark Suddeth and, uh, you know, every in all of their team if they decide. Uh, you know, to come down here to Florida for a field mission this year, we will certainly be trying to team up with them. Again, we have a lot of good things ongoing with this. So if you guys do want to support what we're doing, make sure to go follow me here on Twitter at MicroMally1 and also go subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest up-to-date information on exactly what we're doing. Again, this is supported by you guys. So thank you very much for that. Now, taking a look here at the actual sea surface temperatures, coming off the CDAS methodology from tropicaltippets.com, analyzed here at about 1 o'clock this morning. Again, we continue to see our 26.5 degree isotherm here. That's kind of that magic number that tropical cyclones love, basically. Pushing now into the southern main development region, again, as time goes on, you'll start to really see this begin to really advance further west and north. And again, you know, we were talking here several weeks ago about this 50 west line, but you noticed how that's generally expanded now uh, into about 40 west here. So it's, it's definitely coming further west. You're getting a lot more of that concentration now towards the south here in the western Atlantic Basin, the main development region, and the southern parts especially. So as these tropical waves come off, they're going to have more of a favorable, a favorable thermodynamic environment to work with here uh, over the next several weeks to months as this area continues to warm and expand with size. And we'll you know keep checking back periodically to see how this continues to lift off towards the north here uh, over the next several weeks to months. That's going to be very intriguing to watch, and we'll, we'll put together a, a nice sort of animation on on how that's worked here over the last several months. Now taking a look here, this is the COD Meteorology College page. Uh, GOES 16 visible satellite here taking a look at the wide shot of the Atlantic Basin and some of the Eastern Pacific as well. Again, you notice this big Saharan dust uh, layer right now, this big Saharan air outbreak that came off originally from Africa, now pushing all the way through the Lesser Antilles, the Caribbean, and now ending up here in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, not so much really expanding into Florida, and the reason why is these, uh, these trade winds right now are kind of blowing out like that. So we're not getting a lot of direct trade winds into the, uh, you know, Florida Peninsula region, but there will still be some Saharan dust that kind of does get left over during the next uh, few days or so. Again, we see another uh, Saharan air event out here in the main development region. Again, all these stable clouds up here, you can see those like puffy little cumulus clouds, uh, very indicative of some of this drier, more stable air out here, especially in the northern latitudes and southern latitudes. There's a couple of embedded tropical waves in here, though. You notice the tropical, a pretty decent tropical wave right there uh, that's approaching the southern uh, Lesser Antilles and Windward Islands uh, right now to the south and east of Barbados. And there's also another uh, pretty decent uh, convectively uh, clustered area right now to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands. And over the next several days or so, this will continue to push along with the trade winds, not really expecting any development out of these two systems due to this very strong Saharan air push right here. And again, just too much dry air instability for this time of the year in that environment. This is the remnants of Tropical Storm Dolly. It's now become a post-tropical remnant low as it continues to move off into the, the cooler waters of the North Atlantic Basin and will eventually get caught in the uh, trade winds across here and be forced out into much cooler water. And so really no problem, no significant concern. Again, maybe some of the Maritime Canada getting some clouds from that, but not really anything significant. All the other non-tropical uh, processes kicking off throughout there, not really expecting any development with that. Some area of interest out here in the Gulf of Mexico, not really expecting any development with that. There's just too much to strong wind shear across this area. You can actually see that kind of being pushed atop here. You notice that some of these lower or these lower level clouds or excuse me, higher level clouds rather, are being pushed off towards the south and east. So not expecting any development due to proximity of land and also strong vertical wind shear in that environment. Now the Eastern Pacific Basin on the other hand is basically a fruit basket. Pick whichever one you want basically. We have several systems here. We do have a newly formed tropical depression out here in the Eastern Pacific, Tropical Depression 3E that has formed earlier this morning. This is expected to become a tropical storm over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours or so, reaching maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour within the next 36 to 48 hours over here in this time frame. 
frame. This will head towards the south of Hawaii here, which is the Hawaiian Islands right over here. This will be passed well south of Hawaii. No significant concern for Hawaii at all. This will turn eventually harmlessly off towards the east and maybe even towards the, or I'm sorry, to the west and then eventually towards the southwest here over the next coming days or so. While this remains no significant concern to Hawaii, maybe some very increased swells, you know, maybe a foot of extra swell activity, less than that probably, across Hawaii. But other than that, no significant threats to land over there. There's also several disturbances that we are watching here over the next several days. Uh, multiple disturbances over here. We're watching several of them, and that's what we're taking a look at. One formation chance here. Uh, this has actually gone down to a 30-30 chance here over the next several days as uh, we will get some of the outflow to actually impact this disturbance, which is actually sitting about right over here. Not really expecting much development out of that at all. We do have another area with an 80% chance of formation. And the biggest two concerns to land impacts are going to be these two systems as we get a big high pressure ridge that's setting up across here uh, with a, a low a low pressure trough occurring over portions of the central and northwestern United States. This will help to create this weakness right here which may be able to push and pull some of the tropical activity further up towards the north. So Cabo San Lucas resort areas, Mexico and Central America need to be paying close attention to the progress of these tropical systems as they begin to form and evolve here over the next several days or so. This will certainly be something to watch here going on with time. Now, this is something very intriguing. This is the European Ensemble uh, 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. Basically, w the rising and sinking air in the atmosphere. If you start to look over here, these brownish and reddish and orangish anomalies, these are the departures from normal of the velocity potential. These are suggesting sinking air in the atmosphere. This roughly correlates here to portions of the Western Pacific Basin and the portions of the Central and Eastern Pacific Basin. We also have this area of very strong uh, rising air anomalies here over portions of Africa and the Sahil regions and also over portions of the Eastern Pacific and Western Atlantic basins, including the main development region going on with time. Again, this is starting here at June 25th, and as we go down, we end down here at July 9th. So basically what we're taking a look at here is very anomalous sinking air in this part of the world here over the next several days to weeks. And then as we start to go on with time, you notice all of this rising air here triggered in the western main development region in the western portions of the Atlantic Basin. This will likely set up what could be uh, some formation chance out here in the western main development region or portions of the western Atlantic over the next several weeks or so as we get this very strong, you notice this very strong uh, area Read right over here of rising anomalies over portions of Africa that's going to set up these African easterly waves to be much stronger and much more robust for this time of the year than usually expected. We'll also have this rising air going on with time over portions of the Western Main Development Region and Africa. That's going to help amplify the favorability patterns for tropical cyclones. And believe it or not, this is coming off the site. The, this is coming from weather.us uh, site here. This is the European Ensemble. Uh, your, the European Ensemble uh, forecast system here basically showing the tropical cyclone tracks here over the next several weeks. This is going out through the next 10 days and you notice that there is some signatures here of tropical cyclone formation potentially in portions of the Western Atlantic Basin. So there is something to watch here in the Atlantic Basin as we go on throughout time. This actually ends on Ju or July 3rd at 7 o'clock in the evening. So there is some Something that we'll have to monitor in the Atlantic Basin. Now, again, this does not this does not explicitly say that something will or will not develop. However, <clears throat> given the favorability pattern that is starting to set up across portions of the Western Atlantic main development region, given the warmer anomalies, if we can get the wind shear to relax across the region, if we can get a more window of opportunity for favorability, which does appear to be on the horizon here, there is, yes, a chance, a chance for tropical cyclone activity 
in portions of the Western Maine development region in the Western Atlantic Basin. That does not explicitly say that something will or will not develop, but there is a chance that we have to monitor something over the next uh, 10 or so days, but this is beyond that five-day five window of opportunity. Nothing from the Hurricane Center, nothing official, but we will watch this as we it makes logical sense that there is an upcoming period of favorability and the models are starting to pick up on it. This is basically like playing detective. You have to find your clues to the game, your, your, your clues to everything to, to solve the, the crime or whatever, right? Well, in, in this case, you're picking out the clues to determine if tropical cyclone formation seems, uh, seems reasonable, logical, and will it happen, will it not happen? That last question can't really be answered until we get closer to time. However, we do have the logic and reasoning behind why the European is uh, forecasting tropical cyclone uh, tracks out here in the Western Maine development region. But again, the models are very wishy-washy on this. This is past 10 days. But the overall larger signal is for an upcoming favorable pattern in the western hemi in the western portions of the Atlantic Main Development Region. The Western Hemisphere basically is setting up to have a favorable pattern upcoming here over the next several weeks. This is the GFS forecast here from the 12Z GFS from tropicaltobits.com, valid as of 1 o'clock this afternoon. And nothing really across portions of the Atlantic Main Development Region at all going throughout time. We continue to sp spread that, and again, nothing. But you do notice these tropical cyclones that try to develop in portions of the uh, Eastern Pacific Basin, and that's going to be the theme as we go on through the next several weeks or so. The European, again, pretty much on the board with the same thing pretty much tropical cyclone formation out here in the western pacific or in sorry the eastern pacific basin again the greatest concerns to land right now are going to be from these two tropical uh, disturbances right now they are not uh, cyclones at this point but tropical uh, disturbances that if they do develop there is a chance that portions So again, there is the likelihood or is the chance rather for tropical cyclone activity here to directly impact one of the one of those areas. But again, nothing can be guaranteed and, you know, basically nailed down to a T until it's happening in real time. So again, there's a lot to watch here over the next several days to weeks or so. First beginning out here in the eastern Pacific Basin with Tropical Depression 3E. That should stay well to the south of Hawaii. And then we're also watching more activity dip back down here in portions of the southeastern Pacific with two systems that we really have to watch here for land interest out here, Central America, Mexico, and the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas as we go on throughout time and eventually maybe shifting even into the Atlantic Basin. So hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Mike Romali. Again, make sure to go follow me here on YouTube and subscribe to our channel for unmanned camera system projects, including an all-exclusive documentary on these cameras that is going to be coming up this weekend and everything else that we're able to capture with them. And also make sure to go follow me on Twitter at micromally one That would be greatly appreciated. Your help does support, does your, your support does help tremendously. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening while I try to talk. And I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.